people, welcome back to another episode of the Rich Sports Report. It's been a while since I've had a chance to chat with my people. A lot has happened in the sports world. A lot I want to get you guys updated and hip to. So let's jump right on into it. This week, coming up, when this releases, you'll get, you guys will be prepared for the NFL Sunday and Saturday, which includes the first week of the playoffs. This, this is going to be a, a very interesting year because there was a lot of parity in this, in this NFL season, I will say. Like on the NFC side, you had the Rams, Cardinals, and Packers all leading the charge with 13-3, and 12-5 respectively. And on the AFC side, you had the Titans, you had the Bills, and you had the Bengals as well leading the way. And each division and conference looks very, very comp, uh, competitive. So there, there are six matchups. There's the Cards versus the Rams, 49ers versus Cowboys, Eagles versus Bucks, Pats versus Bills, Raiders versus Bengals, and Steelers versus Chargers. And people, I just wanted you to know my preseason Super Bowl pick, Steelers versus Packers. It's still, it's still available. It's still there. So I wasn't wrong. We made it to the end of the season, and my Super Bowl predictions are still alive. So stay posted on that. But uh, I'm not too confident that that's going to be what the Super Bowl is this year. Like I said, I, the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, he's been pissing all year. He's been telling everyone, fuck you. On the, on the AFC side, Titans getting Derrick Henry back. Julio Jones finally caught his first touchdown of the year. A.J. Brown is coming back. They looking, they looking very healthy. They looking very healthy and very scary. As a Patriots fan, you know Mac Jones has been uh, playing like a rookie as of late, I should say, and that's that's very unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. He he had a very terrible game versus the Dolphins the other day on Sunday, and it is what it is because we're still in the playoffs. But if we won that game, we could be versing the Bengals in Cincinnati rather than the Bills in Buffalo. But that's either either here nor there. Uh, I also I also want to give a, a talk about real quickly the Georgia versus Alabama football game, national championship game, which took place earlier this week. Georgia beat Alabama. I know I'm, I'm surprised I'm saying this as well. Georgia beat Alabama 33 to 18 to win a national championship and to beat them twice in one year. That I, I don't know about y'all, but it felt it felt very good watching Alabama lose, and it felt really good watching those those kids in Georgia win even though they all full grown men at the age of 19 years old. But it is what it is. Now, people, let's jump into my favorite sport, your favorite topics, the NBA. It feels it feels very good saying this is a, this is a feel good story. If you haven't been keeping up with the NBA over the last 2 years, a very important person in Klay Thompson has not been playing because he has torn his ACL and his Achilles in back-to-back -back seasons. And those are the two worst injuries you can have in sports by themselves. So to get them in back-to-back -back seasons, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. But this man, Klay Thompson, finally made a return on Sunday versus the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was in the starting lineup for the Warriors. It felt like the Warriors of old. It felt beautiful to watch. Steph Curry was hitting on cylinders. Klay Thompson was doing his thing. He even caught a body. He dunked on two people. In his first game back, it's been two years. That man is like that. But uh, he had 17 points in, in 20 minutes. I feel very good in saying that the Warriors are going to make the finals now that they got their second best player back. They just need to integrate him into the team, and I think everything will continue to run smoothly. That being said, I think the Nets – are going to be in the finals as well because they also got one of their star players back this year, and that's Kyrie Irving. We know Mr. No Vaccination. That man Kyrie is back on a part-time basis because he's still not vaccinated. So he's not allowed to play in Brooklyn, but he could play away games. So Kyrie returned versus the Indiana Pacers, and uh, he actually dropped 20 points, and uh, he, he hit a couple daggers to seal the deal. So he's doing his thing. Kyrie's back. Klay Thompson's back. I feel like we're back in 2016. LeBron is averaging 30 for the month of January so far. Over the last three weeks, he's been averaging 38 and 7. Man, LeBron is 37 years old doing that. He's averaging 38 and 7 for an entire month at the age of 37 years old. I respect the shit out of that. Like, I really can't say shit. I hate that man. 
That man has done a lot of fucked up things to the Celtics over the years. Over my life lifetime. But the what he's doing this NBA season has never been seen before. Has never been done before. I don't think it'll be replicated. Especially because he's been doing this since his entire career. And he's just taking it to another level this year. Plus, you got to remember Russell, Rus Russell Westbrook is on this man's team. He got at least five turnovers a game. Guaranteed, he got to overcome with Russell Westbrook. The fact that he's overcoming that, as well as Anthony Davis's bitch ass being injured every other game, I don't know, but LeBron is not getting enough talk about the MVP for me. There's too much KD in Steph Curry and not enough LeBron because if he is able to sustain this through the entire season, which I highly doubt, but it's still early and I hope he can, but I'm going to still speak on it. If he is, he deserves some some conversations for the MVP. But uh, I I also want to touch touch on one, one more thing as well. Lance Stevenson is back in the NBA, people. Uh, born ready. We we all love Lance Stevenson for the things he has done over the course of the of his NBA career. But uh, he actually returned that same game Kyrie returned, and he he dropped thirty. He dropped thirty in his first game back with the Pacers. He's back, baby. He's back. He's here to stay. The Indiana Pacers have signed him for the rest of the year. And it that is another feel-good story because, like I said, it's like we're back in 2016. The league is back to the way it should be. We have Isaiah Thomas back in the league now. But I want to end the show with this development that developed today, essentially. Philadelphia. You know the Philadelphia 76 is the team with Joel Embiid. Uh, ben Simmons, the one that doesn't want to play for the team anymore. They're now looking to trade Ben Simmons along with starting small forward Tobias Harris. Now, why is that relevant? Why is that important, people? It's important because Ben Simmons is getting paid $35 million this year. And Tobias Harris is getting paid $45 million. Now, that's $80 million in cap space that they're trying to get rid of. Now, my math has never been the best. I would not call myself a mathematician, but I don't see how any team could conceivably match up those two salaries with whatever the fuck they got on their team right now. So in my opinion, Philly is, I don't know what they're doing. I really do not know what they're doing, but I don't care because that's not my city and they're just wasting Joel Embiid's prime and it is what it is. But I just wanted to make that aware to all, to all the viewers watching that because if there is a trade that happens, I would love to see the details of that because that'll be very interesting. But um that's that's really it. That's all I got for you guys this week guys. It's been a great it's been a great sports season both in the NFL and NBA. NFL's in the playoffs. I can't wait to see what happens. NBA, the trade deadline's approaching, so you know a lot of things are about to get spicy and I'll keep you updated with that. But as I said, it was a great episode this week. I'm going to see y'all next week. Have a great night people. Love.